Who would like to hear about a love story? <laughs> so I'm going to tell you about deep neural networks and analog processing and memory. So first, a little bit about our eligible bachelor. Deep neural networks are important in a range of applications, from autonomous navigation to Internet of Things, to mobile applications, to efficient data centers. All of them rely on efficient, high throughput, deep neural network inference to get their tasks done fast and get them done efficiently. When we think about getting deep neural networks running efficiently, we'll often turn to accelerators or customized hardware that run deep neural networks. Conventional accelerators will fetch inputs and weights from memory. They'll do so the computations with these inputs and weights, and then they will write the results back to memory. However, we run into a problem here because we're doing a lot of movement to and from memory. This data movement can consume a lot of energy. So our computations or our multiply accumulates can be done with less than a picojoule of energy. However, the reads from main memory, like that 32-bit DRAM read in the bottom, can consume hundreds or even over a thousand times more energy than one of our computations. To solve this problem, many works have turned to actually moving the computation inside the memory itself. So instead of fetching the data to, or from memory and computing on it, we will compute inside the memory. And we'll do that with processing and memory. But like all love stories, or like many love stories, we run into the problem of communication. And here, our memory and analog processing is speaking a different language than the rest of our chip. Our processing is speaking analog and the chip is speaking digital. So even though we have very great promises here, we can potentially get very low energy with our analog computation. We'll need a digital and analog converter to do the translation of our inputs into the analog domain. And we'll also need an analog digital converter to read our computed analog outputs out. And I'm sure many of you are now seeing one of the limitations of processing memory that needs to be addressed here. And that's that these analog digital converters, or ADCs, can consume a significant amount of energy. So how do we reduce this ADC energy? Well, looking at this plot here, we have energy on the y-axis and the accuracy of our deep neural network on the x-axis. One way to reduce the energy of the ADC is to reduce the range of the ADC, or the number of values that it can represent. Here, we're just teaching the ADC a smaller vocabulary. That way, it won't have to work as hard to do the translation. However, because it can't represent everything that the DNN may need to know, it can result in accuracy loss. We can recover this accuracy by modifying and retraining our DNNs. However, this whole route could be problematic because every time we get a new hardware, we don't want to have to remake our DNN. We don't want to have to modify our whole software stack. So my work is in avoiding changing the DNN. Instead of consuming all this energy, reducing the energy, and then changing the DNN to recover accuracy, Let's just modify computation such that we don't need a high energy ADC in the first place. And when we do this, we'll have to be thinking about our analog computations. So our analog computations will produce some distributions of analog values. And nominally, this will take a large ADC range to represent. The thing to note here is that if we'd like to reduce the range of the ADC, we really need to reduce the range of our computations that we're doing in the analog domain. The first way we'll do this is by noticing that each of these distributions has a different mean. And if we can pull the mean out and compute with it separately, then we can shift all of our computed distributions into the center of the ADC range. Now, they take a smaller range, a smaller energy overall to compute with. Next, we're still limited. Computation B up there in the red takes up a larger range than the other computations. This will require a larger ADC range to represent. We don't want to be limited by one big range computation. So when we see things like this, we can break them up or slice them into smaller pieces. Here, we'll break up computation B into a whole bunch of little pieces, and now each piece will produce a smaller value overall. This will fit in a smaller, lower energy ADC range. Finally, we're still limited because every once in a while, we get a big outlier value that creates a much wider range. Here, just one of our computations produced a big number, and we don't want to have to pay for those outlier distributions that occur rarely. Our solution here is speculation. We'll just guess. Most of our values will be in range most of the time. We'll use a narrow range ADC and save energy. 
When things land out of range, we can recover that. We'll deal with it. Our ADC and analog computation can disagree sometimes, but we can get over it. When we do this, with all three of these, we can reduce the ADC range significantly and increase our efficiency and throughput. Here, compared to the architecture I showed you earlier, an architecture that tries all three of these strategies can get up to five times higher efficiency and three times higher throughput. So, what do we learn? Analog processing and memory can efficiently accelerate deep neural networks. That problem of moving the DNN weights back and forth and paying the energy costs can be solved by processing and memory because we don't have to move the DNN weights in order to compute. But then we run into the problem of the analog digital converters. So to use processing and memory effectively, we have to think about how we do our computations. What computations is our neural network doing? What kind of values does it need to represent? And how can we formulate these computations for analog hardware such that it's efficient and fast to compute with? When we have good answers to these questions, we can get lower energy, higher throughput hardware. And then we can complete this love story. Thank you. <laughs>